Hey everyone, it's Jeannie, and today I'm back with a flashlight card featuring Gura Steiner's Ghost Stamp Set. And this is actually a really easy card to make, and it's super fun, especially for kids. So I'm starting out with a card panel that is four and a quarter by five and a half. You'll note that I marked off a border about a quarter of an inch on three sides. So the left, the right, and the top, and I placed the stamps within that border. So the reason why I'm doing that is to create this flashlight panel, you'll be adding a panel right behind the acetate piece and it will create a border around it. So if you want your scene not to be affected by that border, you want to make sure that everything that you stamp will be within this border. This is actually a template for me. You don't really have to use a template. You can just stamp straight on acetate the scene that you want to create. But for me, I wanted to add a little bit of a background. I'm using Trini Stamps Birch Trees, and this is something I totally could have uh, freehanded because I'm going to be going in and coloring all the little trees. But I decided to use a stencil because it just made it easier for me and less thinking and less overthinking about the how the trees looked and if they look like trees. So I staggered them all in the background to make a little scene of these ghosts in the forest and I went in and colored them in with my pencil. I really didn't need to but I decided that it was necessary so I did it and I'm including it in the videos. So once I finish my scene I'm cutting out a piece of acetate which is also four and a quarter by five and a half. This will fit into a normal A2 envelope. For the black piece of cardstock, this will be your frame and it will measure at six by four and a half inches and it's scored at a quarter of an inch on the left, right, and top hand side. So I went ahead and only uh, scored the right hand side and the top part of the card panel because I wanted to make sure that the acetate would fit snugly. So once I place the acetate, I'm holding it down with a piece of washi and taking it back to my paper trimmer, which I use as a scoreboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and score that left hand side. And I do that just because I want it to fit properly, sometimes with acetate or something that you're wrapping around a piece of paper, it ends up being a little bit larger. So if you scored perfectly at you know four and a quarter and five and a half, it won't fit. So I'll just trim off um, the excess paper leaving about a quarter of an inch so I can fold it and create that frame around the acetate. And then you'll notice that I left a little bit of space at the bottom of the card and that's okay because I'll just go ahead and trim that off later. I do trim off the little square that is formed on the two corners just because it will make it easier to kind of uh, fold down and adhere the little frame. I'm going to go ahead and add double-sided adhesive on the little frame panels and the piece of acetate will go right within this little area and you'll use the double-sided flaps to adhere the black card panel to the acetate and that creates that frame that we kept the scene out of. So for the acetate piece, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the misty. When I was stamping out my template, I left it to be the same. I didn't touch it. And I'm going to go in with stays on ink to stamp out my scene on acetate. Stays on ink works well on plastic. And that's why I'm choosing to stamp with this. I think any other stamping ink that I have wouldn't work on acetate. I keep stays on around specifically for stamping on acetate. I'm going to go ahead and put my acetate piece right on top of my template and this is solely for me to know exactly where to color in those trees. And so like I said, you could have stamped directly on the acetate and colored freehand and it would have been fine. But for me, I wanted to make sure that my scene was within the area that it needed to be as well as the trees that were pre added and so I can use it as a template just to color it in. I had originally gone in with a bunch of Sharpies and colored it in and it worked really well except the Sharpies were a little bit dark so I couldn't see the sentiment with the little birch trees color in brown. So I went in with Copic markers. 
So as a warning, Copic markers uh, kind of work like alcohol ink on yuppo paper. So it kind of moves on its own and creates a little bit of dimension. So even though I'm coloring solid, you can see a little bit of detail within the alcohol ink. And that's just because it moves on its own. And if you're okay with that, go ahead and use Copic markers. If you're not okay with that and want more solid coloring with shading, go ahead and use Sharpie markers. But I figured every crafter probably has some kind of alcohol markers on hand and they don't have to go out and buy Sharpies. And this worked perfectly fine. So some colors don't show up as well on the acetate. So you'll see that I had switched the greens. I also had started out with purple for the background, which I thought was a dark color. But once I put on the acetate, it was really light. So I went in with a darker blue. And I definitely won't win any coloring awards for this. But I think it's really fun to do with your kids. Like, this is something that they would enjoy and the magic of the flashlight card is pretty cool too. So like I mentioned, I started out with purple. I, I just went in and added a darker blue because that light purple was not the vibe I was going for. I wanted a nighttime vibe. The only issue with alcohol ink on acetate is that it's a little sticky. So I went in with my anti-static powder tool um, I poured on some powder or you can use baby powder with a cotton ball and wiped it all across the scene and that removed the stickiness. I did um, brush it all off with a microfiber a towel and that removed all the powder. I would remind you to brush it off on the front and back because the powder got everywhere but it made it less sticky. And so this is where I'm putting the acetate piece into my little pocket. So I already have the adhesive ready to go and I know that it fits. So when I'm happy with the placement, I'll go ahead and remove that double-sided adhesive and it will create that frame right on around that acetate piece and also hold the acetate piece in place. I would also say that I went in and added adhesive on the other side of the acetate piece too so it was directly adhered to the back part of this black panel um, only because it kind of left like a little gap and it wanted to like um, bend up so I wanted it to lay flat so I kind of maneuvered a uh, double-sided adhesive right underneath that frame area and I was able to get it to lay down flat so I would put it not only on the black panel but I would also put double-sided adhesive on the edge of the back side of the acetate and glue it down. I'm trimming off the excess and this will be a four and a quarter by five and a half card panel. It might be slightly larger because it is hugging that piece of acetate, but it shouldn't be significant enough not to fit into an envelope. I also freehanded the flashlight. I did not have a flashlight stamp on hand, so I just used a ruler and created my own flashlight. I didn't like how the first one turned out, so I went ahead and created a second one. I think that the flashlight looked a little bulky and I wanted to slim it down a bit. So that's what I did. And I also wanted a longer light area. So the light area is what is gonna be used to kind of shine the flashlight on your scene. So you want it long enough so it can move around your full card without the flashlight getting stuck into the panel. I just went ahead and recreated it with a longer flashlight. I do trim it on the corners later on so it's kind of rounded. I like the look of the blunt edges for the flashlight's light but I thought that the corner edges made it look a little bit more soft and it was able to move around a lot easier within the scene and that's why I opted to do that but it's definitely your preference of how you want to create your flashlight so once I did that, that is it for the card. Once you insert the flashlight into the panel between the black cardstock and your acetate, it looks like you're shining a flashlight on the little scene. And I thought it is so cool. And I thought it was perfect for ghost hunting in this card. So thanks again for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you're getting in the mood for Halloween. Have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.